Hey everybody, we're back. This is MJ here on Just Plain Fun. And today we're going to be talking about, this is kind of a hodgepodge video, and we're entitling it Stuff You Should Know. So of course most of this is going to be geared towards Stanley Hand Planes, and this is for both collectors and users. I'm going to have a little something for everybody, and we're just going to run through some stuff that's based on some of the questions that I get frequently, and just based on, like I said, stuff that you should know. And so, by the way, congratulations to Tess Arnold, who won the Type 17 number four in our giveaway when we hit 500 subscribers. Next stop, 1,000. So appreciate everybody for subscribing. And by the way, Tess chose the store credit, the $50 store credit, which was an option. And so that Type 17 number four is for sale. If anybody's interested, y'all let me know. But let's go ahead and get into this little hodgepodge of stuff that you should know. So this is a body for an S4 hand plane. And this was something that Stanley put out. It's made of steel versus cast iron. And it was geared for schools. And so this could be used to teach youngsters the basics of how to set up and use a hand plane. And if it happened to fall off the bench because a new person was using it, somebody who's not terribly experienced then it wouldn't be the end of the world. Chances are, well, it's not going to crack, but chances are no damage is going to come other than maybe the tote, but you're not going to end up with a situation like this where a hand plane hit the floor and fall down, go boom. So this is S4. And the reason why I want to show it to you is because there's a couple things that are unique about the S4. And the most important one for you to know is the tote. So it's got the sticker here, meaning that it was produced during what we now call the sweetheart era, because that was a an indicator of the sweetheart logo, the indicator of sweetheart era, if you will. So what's unique about the S4 is the handle, the tote will only go on the S4 and you cannot put another handle from another plane on there because it's not going to fit. So it's all about the angle there and that tote will not fit. So even this one, same deal. It's not going to fit. Even the aluminum ones, you can actually, it's got the wider opening. And so you can actually get the aluminum one to sit on there, but you can't get the screw to actually tighten down because once again, the angle is different. And so it's a little takeaway in case you're ever shopping for an S4, or if you happen to come across a tote, a loose tote, and you can't figure out why it won't go on to the body that you have, that could very well be the reason why. So as you can see, it's longer. And so it actually hangs off the back of that little tab on the back of the regular size planes. So just something to keep in mind. And one other anomaly to know about the S4 is it actually had a slightly different lever cap. So you would commonly see a red background. You can just barely see where it's in there now, but you would commonly see a red background behind the Stanley on the S4 and S5 planes. And as a side note, because of that horrible pitting on the bottom of that S4, that tote as well as the frog are both for sale. So if you happen to be rebuilding an S4, of course, let me know and I will get you hooked up. So this is another question that I get fairly often because people buy 48s and 49s at flea markets, um, yard sales, etc., all the time. And they often do not have their irons for whatever reason. So I don't actually own a Stanley 48 or a 49 for that matter. If I want to do tongue and groove stuff, I just use my 45. But I'm using a union here, same concept, just so that y'all get the idea. So most of y'all probably know this, but just in case you don't, the irons from a 45 will fit in a 48 or a 49. So as you can see, they extend up a little bit further than what the original blade would have, but they go right in there. And this one happens to be a 3 16 but if you wanted to do experiment with different sizes for whatever reason, you can do that. Of course, you're still gonna have to keep your channel in mind and, and account for all that. But just know that you can use irons from a 45 or 55 in your 48 or your 49 as a suitable substitute. And side note on that, if you happen to have asked me recently, hey, do you have any 3 16 cutters? Cause you need one for your 48 or 49, which I get that question uh, rather frequently. Uh, the one that I just showed is not for sale. That's from my, from my user 55. So I was just using it just for this video. And the reason why I bring that up is because most things that you see in these videos, most of the time are in fact for sale. So we're going to talk about lever caps next. And I have a very, very simplified version, oversimplified version of the evolution of Stanley lever caps. So the early ones, 
you're going to be see are going to be plain that goes through your type 12s and then with your type 13s 14s and 15s you're going to see with the large stanley like so with the keyhole and so that's going to be your 13 through 15 and then with type 16 we see the introduction of the kidney hole i'm going to talk more about that here in a few minutes but as with most things Stanley related, there are variations. I already talked about how you would have a red background on your S series planes, just as an example. But another variation is Stanley went to great lengths to distinguish the five and a half, the number five and a half planes. And so specifically with their lever, lever caps. So when you see one that is, you know, roughly the same size, this is actually a little bit smaller because it comes in at two and a quarter for this particular era two and a quarter inches for the iron and then the lever cap is roughly the same size as that but when you see one that has the smaller stanley like that which incidentally happens to be the same size as what you'll see on the number four and number five size and it's not larger like you see on the sixes sevens and even the four and a halves that is unique to the five and a half so when you see one that has that smaller size on a two and a quarter inch or roughly two and a quarter inch lever cap that's for a five and a half and then again this is for the four and a half the six and the seven and then just as a side note it was in 1939 when stanley changed over the five and a half over to standardize it with the four and a half the six and the seven that's when they went to the two and three eighths inch iron with that and so on the same note the older ones like your type 11 type 12 five and a half for example are going to have this two and a quarter etched on the back and to the best of my knowledge that's the only time that stanley etched a number on the back of a lever cap if you know different you know by all means let me know i know the marsh planes from what i understand had their sizes etched in the back but for stanley that two and a quarter there so we know that that is for a number five and a half and that one incidentally goes with my user five and a half which like most of my users is a type 11. So I've had people ask about, hey, when do we get to see you know, your collection or when will we see your collection? And, and I will, I'll show it. This is actually one that's not in as good of condition as some of my others. I've got a number of clean and, and nice parts on it and of course a nice long iron, but then I've also got some, some scarring back here, which might be tough to see, but we're gonna let her hang around because she meets all the other requirements and there's a little bit worse there and of course still works as it should and just know that your lever caps just because your iron is two and three eighths that does not mean that your lever cap is going to be two and three eighths i've seen variation of up to really an eighth of an inch even three sixteenths and if you think about an eighth of an inch that's only going to cut a sixteenth off of each side and so it's really not much but you'll see a lot of variation and I invite everybody to go and, and start measuring your planes and see just how much, or measuring the lever caps just to see how much variation there is, especially on your larger sizes, the sixes, sevens, et cetera, because there's quite a bit. All right, so this next segment has to do with the type studies. And this is something that I hear a lot. I get a lot of questions about and it's mostly from folks that are relatively new to the hobby. Obviously, no big deal. It's part of the education process. You know, we all started there one day. Um, but the type study is, of course, based on the number fours exclusively. And so if you look right here, you can see that there's some basic differences between those. The primary one being the raised rib or ridge there on the toe and heel here. And you don't see it on here. So if you go to wooden shop, you know, you Google Stanley hand plane uh, type study and you go to wooden shop. It's got the the logic tree that you follow down. You answer the questions. Well, the majority of the time, especially if you're typing a number four, you're going to get that right. But the problem that we run into is when we're typing the larger planes like this number six right here. And so the biggest thing that I want you to remember is that with the larger sizes, they a lot of times did not have the raised rib or ridge on the toe and heel. As a matter of fact, I can tell you that type 15, it absolutely did not start for the larger sizes. So you can see it's got some of the similar characteristics as far as the Made in USA, of course, in a different location and all that. But 
and and no patent dates that's the main thing because when you're following that logic tree it's going to say well how many patent dates do you have and then you, you go along through it so someone would type this and they would think that this was a type 15 based on the fact that it doesn't have the raised rib and that's where the type study at least that particular one on wooden chop is going to steer them so often not the case often it can be a later one and as a matter of fact when i do the type study on the later ones when i do a type study breakdown we'll talk more about the the frog bed here but just know that it's not that cut and dried and the type study is based exclusively off of the number fours and so don't get married to this idea of rib or no rib for determining your type and speaking of type studies let's go ahead and talk about type 17 real quick this number four just can't stop showing up in the videos i guess it wants to be a youtube star or something so this is that number four type 17 and if you've looked at your type studies you know that your type 17s were unique they had you know typically the rubber back here versus the brass and they usually had a thicker casting and then they usually had a non-rosewood tote. So this is just hardwood that's that's varnished or stained or whatever to look, let's go with stained, to look like rosewood. And then another telltale sign is a lot of times they would have had that steel. So that way you did not have the brass and barrel nut. So this is actually rosewood. So this is an anomaly for the Type 17s. But really what I want to get across here is the type 17s do not care about your type study. They do not care about your supposed rules that, you know, we came up with years and years later, which by the way, this does have the steel fasteners and not the brass in it. But just as an example, these are all different adjusters that you would have seen, could have seen on a type 17. So this one's got, you know, the, the ridge there, the indentation, whatever you want to call it there. And then this one's solid. You've got the, the steel there versus the brass. You've got an all steel adjuster. These you would see sometimes. And then sometimes you would even see the brass. And so, you know, whether it was an early type 17 or a late one, say 1941, 1942, whatever, or a late one, you know, as the war was ending, whatever the case. Or uh, I've heard tale from talking to Lee Patchell that, uh, Sometimes the guys would intentionally replace the hard rubber blade adjuster with a brass one. Like after the war, they would come back and they didn't like the looks of this. And so they would go out and get a brass one and put that one on there. So a lot of different things. And when you consider how old, you know, it was back in the 1940s and you consider how old these are, you know, anything, anything could happen. You know, all bets are off when it comes to that stuff. So, but typically it's going to be the steel screws and then non-rose wood, and then any one of these. This right here is the most common one that I have personally seen, but somebody else out there might have seen, you know, 20 type 17s and might have seen, say, more of this style or even more steel ones. So take away type 17s. They don't care about your rules. Let me go ahead and circle back and talk about this kidney hole real quick. So when Stanley came out with this in... The 1930s this was you know this is a big deal it was really nothing more than a marketing gimmick but it was also stanley trying to sell hand planes and they were trying to separate themselves from the competition the idea being with the kidney hole obviously it's going to be less likely for the lever cap to to back off on its own of course we know that if you actually tighten your screw properly and you have the proper tension on your lever then that's not going to happen but they were pretty proud of it. They put this patent number on there. That's what this patent number signifies is, in regard, you know, is in regards to or pertains to the kidney hole there. And so you'll see that a lot. You'll see that in some different places. And as a matter of fact, they actually, for a time, put it on the iron as well. So I know it might be tough to read there, but they did put that same patent number on there. So we know that this is, you know, a type 16 iron because at least from my experience, they didn't leave it on there very long. But it is not uncommon to continue to see that patent number show up on the Type 17s because it was still, you know, from a very similar era and they left that patent number on there for whatever period of time. I've never seen in writing how long it was that it stayed around. And so keeping with our theme of stuff you should know, 
if you ever come across one uh, tote rod that's bent like this tote screw and you want to replace it by all means let me know and I, I sell them for five dollars each and you are welcome to but if you don't want to spend the money of course you can put this on like say like a tiny anvil or something or even a big anvil and you can lightly tap that to try to straighten it out but don't let this discourage you and don't let you or you know don't let it have you give up on it especially if you don't want to spend the money and so you want to keep your plain original i'm not editing that out i don't care um so let's say that you're having trouble getting it to line up you know the the brass nut won't sink down in there and that thing won't line up so little little trick just in case you're relatively new and maybe you're unaware of this you just take your screw and you go ahead and get it started first as a matter of fact, you can screw it all the way down and try and line your angle up the best you can with how you think it's going to line up. And then just slide your tote or your handle down over top of it. And then just start your brass from up top. And of course, I'm not going to have my screwdriver handy. I need an editor. So, and then you just go ahead and, and get that thing started if you can. Sometimes it might take a little, a little pushing. And so there you go. And so you've got a bent screw, but you've got a nice tight fit and you've installed your tote. So don't let that bother you too much because how often are you going to take the tote off anyway? As in after you've completed your restoration or your cleaning or whatever, how often are you going to take it off? So I want to talk about screwdrivers next. Remember we're covering, we're covering a lot of ground here. We're covering a lot of different topics. So these are a couple of examples of the screwdrivers that came with number 45s and number 55s. And I just want to show them just so that y'all see what they look like. This is one that's, you know, that I got with the number 55, actually my user 55, and it's actually got a number on there, number 271. So these have kind of come back into favor lately. I've seen them selling on eBay for, you know, 35, even on the, the Can I Have It auction site they've been selling for i think 35 40 dollars something like that each and then this is one of the older ones and just as a point of reference you might see these with these little scallops like like that and then you also might see them with just a straight blade there and so just wanted to give you guys an idea of what they look like so if case, in case you ever see these out in the wild this is the kind of thing you want to look for when you're in an estate sale and you're just rummaging through drawers because chances are it got separated from the tool itself it's not in the box but it might be in a drawer or something and i can tell you, you've had some luck with whether it's screwdrivers or especially like parts for planes and being a parts guy that's the kind of thing i always look for so let's talk bed rocks this is another thing that i get requests for rather frequently is some different knobs and on the bed rocks you're going to see that raised ring and so when you see the raised ring you might think well i need a tapered knob meaning that the base of it tapers inward because what we're accustomed to on our bailey patterns is that that taper actually goes down into the raised ring and this was one improvement that stanley made that was effective i mean this one kept the knobs from cracking you see a lot of those older straight knobs on the type 13s and older that are cracked whether it's because of people over tightening or you know too much pushing whatever the case but this ring really does a good job of protecting the bottom of that knob. And they put the ring on the bedrocks. But of note, the earlier bedrocks, and I don't know my bedrocks as well as I know my Stanley's, so I'm just going to classify it as the earlier ones. The earlier ones still had the straight base. And so that knob actually sits on top of the ring versus recessing down into it so if you've got an early bedrock basically if it's got patent dates in the bed you know as a general rule i'm throwing that out there chances are it's going to have a straight based knob that is not going to recess into it and that's going to be the one that you need and of course because that's the one you need that's the one that i'm not going to have either any of or as many of because they're harder to find and they're especially harder to find in really good condition and then the same thing applies when you're talking about your baileys and again type 14 and newer is going to have the not, the raised ring type 13 and older is going to have the non-raised ring and just as a side note your type 13 and older knobs will work they will fit just fine on your bedrocks they have that straight base 
And so that is at least an advantage because they are compatible between the two different patterns. And speaking of knobs, let's talk low knobs real quick. So this is from left to right. This is your number one, number two, number three, number four. And then when you get into your fives, five and a half, sixes, sevens, there's a lot of variation there and they're pretty close in size. And so I've just got these laid out and let's say these are representative of your four and a half, five and a half, uh, five, sixes and sevens. And then this is your eight. This one does stand alone as, as a bit larger. But the takeaway here and what I want y'all to know is that they're not all created equal. So when you contact me and you let me know that you need a low knob, I need to know, you know, if you got it specifically what type. It's always helpful to shoot me pictures of what you're working with because sometimes I can help you troubleshoot and help you identify if maybe you've got a Franken plane or something mismatched, whatever the case. But just know that all of your low knobs are absolutely not the same size. And so we got to figure out what's going to work best on your plane. And then the quality control, as Stanley, I can tell you during this time, I'm going to say it was not, not superior because there is some, um, a fair amount of variation, even among similar sizes where the diameter might be a little bit larger or smaller. So my feeling is that if you can get close and if you can get something that's comfortable in your hand and it looks appropriate on the front of the plane, I say go with it because Maybe the information's out there on what the exact diameter is going to, you know, is supposed to be. But again, my feeling is if you get close, you're good. If it's comfortable and, and you like the way it looks and feels, I say go for it. All right, I got one more for you. And this one is from the suitable substitute category. And so for whatever reason on these 140s, I've just seen so many 140s where the screw for the lever cap is bent. And I don't know if it has to do with the mechanism. Maybe people are over tightening the screw. And then when you adjust the iron and it's pushing to put too much pressure on it or whatever the case. But I've just seen so many of these screws that are bent. And so, of course, if you want a nice straight one for whatever reason, you like the aesthetic or you feel like it's going to give you better performance and you want a straight screw, you go on eBay and they're just terribly overpriced, like everything on eBay. And I can say that because I sell on eBay. So I'll let y'all in on a little secret. This screw right here on a number 78, and granted this is only a half of a 78. So this is like a, what is that? A 36 and a half or something. It's a little convertible, but this screw right here that holds the lever cap on a number 78 is identical. So if you ever need a screw and we all know how easy it is to find a, a 78 body because they're all missing the fences and the depth stops so as you can see that screw is identical so if you ever need one for your 140 you want a nice straight one just grab one off of your scrap 78 that you've been looking for an affordable fence for and you'll be in good shape and that friends and neighbors is a wrap so I appreciate y'all tuning in. I hope that you learned something. I'm going to go ahead and be egotistical enough to say that I'm pretty confident that everybody who watches this video all the way through is going to at least pick up something that they didn't know prior to watching it. So as always, I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all. If you like this content, please do like and subscribe. And remember, when we hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to be giving something away again another hand plane it's going to be something better than a type 17 number four